So, just what the cuss is a lignotuber? And what is a burl talking about wood that we make, you know, people make pipes out of, right? Briar pipes. And how does any of that have any cussing thing to do with that beautiful flame grain and bird's eye that we see in our briar pipes? All right. Saddle up. Let's go. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the adventures of the Renaissance Piper. Renaissance Piper here, y'all. Jeffrey Alton Carter. I'm not smoking today because I'm going to be talking a lot. Well, hopefully not a lot. We'll try to keep this short, maybe. <laughs> okay, so a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned something about the relationship between flame grain and bird's eye that we see in the briar wood that is used to make briar pipes. And now that's specifically talking about a species from the Mediterranean called the white heath tree. It's actually more like a, a big brush, a woody plant that's more like a big brush tree, brush kind of tree, um, anyway, and it grows in these areas kind of like what we would um, consider like the chaparrales that we see in, in out in California. And in those areas where those trees live, it's it's uh how can we say this it's hot it's arid and it's dry a lot of times okay so when when we talk about all right i hear a lot of people that when they talk about that bulbous growth that you see and I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna put some links. Um, one of the links is gonna be to a YouTube documentary that is an offshoot out of that really kick-ass documentary about about pipe making and smoking pipes and the history and all of that, which is called Father the Flame. I'm gonna put a link in the bucket to a specific, it'll go to that, take you to that YouTube cha channel, but there's a specific um, short piece of that documentary which is only there as a YouTube standalone, which is about Mimo, who is, uh, if you've seen that documentary, Mimo is a briar cutter over in, uh, in the Mediterranean, in Italy, and um, he's considered to be one of the best in the world. So, you'll be able to go there and watch that. And I want you to go watch it. Now, what they don't talk about, I hear a lot of people, I have seen other people um, who write about briar wood and they call it a burl. Okay, let's, let's get something clear. The science, the scientist, the biologist is coming out in me. So what you see at the base of that white heath tree is not a burl, okay, a burl like you see on oak trees and all kinds of different trees, a true burl is caused by stress or, um, and usually that's caused by, it's a manifestation of disease caused by, uh, it can be a fungus, it can be a mold, it can be a, a parasitic insect infestation, uh, those kinds of things, a virus, it can be a virus in the tree 
that causes that burl, that swirled burl wood. Because if you look at true burl wood and you look at the grain, it ain't straight grain. Okay? It's all twisted and, and, and whirled. W-H-O-R-L-E-D. Whirled together. So it's got that twisted look to the grain. It's rounded and all tight and bunched together. It doesn't have that straight grain like you see when you think about uh, the body of that what is called a lignotuber. Okay? I'm going to put some links and things in the bucket. Look there. I'm actually... I'm going to connect I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a um, a link to a show enough scientific journal article about lignotubers lignotuberous plants in Mediterranean regions okay so a burl is caused by those things that I just mentioned okay and you see this big knot like thing on the side of a tree now at the base when you t when you look at a, a white heath tree and you dig out around the base, it's down, and this can be above the surface of the ground, all right, that lignotuber, or even below the surface of the dirt. Now with those white heath trees, it's kind of down and it's, and it's below. Now lignotubers, lignotuberous plants are, um, it's not caused by the things that I mentioned before, it's it's ontogenically determined. Okay, now how can I? <laughs> Y'all are going, what? In the, what the cuss is ontogenically determined? Okay, it's genetics. It, it, it has to do with the genetics. In other words, it's an, adapt, it's an adaptation by that species to certain environmental pressures on that plant species where it grow, lives and grows. Okay? The things that the reason that some plants adapt into what is called a lignotuberous species, where genetically it's when it you know puts off a seed and another one from that bush from that tree shrub you know sprouts up and grows one of its offspring, it's also going to automatically have that lignotuber. It's a genetic thing, it's like you know, if you have blue eyes, uh and blonde hair and your wife has blue eyes and blonde hair, I'm talking about guys, then you have kids, more than likely they're going to have blonde hair and blue eyes or brown hair and brown eyes. But it's the genetics. So what causes that lignotuber in all those white heath trees is a genetic thing and originally that was an adaptation. So it, the apparent tree of that white heath generations before of that tree, right, didn't have a lignotuber. But now because the area where those plants grow um, has a lot of fires that come through and also because it's, it's a drought for a good period of the year, it's very dry, that was an adaptation by that plant to, to, um, to conserve carbohydrates and water down there in that bulbous growth called that lignotuber below the ground so it could store water, right, during drought times and if a fire came through and burned, burned the top part of the plant, come back and there's stored water and food, carbohydrates that are in, that are in there stored up. Okay? Alright, so that's the difference. Now, so when you see, when you hear people call it a burl and one of these links I'm going to put below, you can still go and, and read it and it's, a, it's an article by Russ Ouellette. But um, he's going to refer to it as a burl. It ain't a burl, okay? Um, he, you know, he's probably going by other articles that maybe he's read or, or you know, stuff that he's looked up online and and called it a burl. So he called it a burl. Well, the biological scientific fact is it's not a burl. Burl is a totally different thing. Like we said, this is what we call a lignotuber. Okay, so. When you're talking about the morphological makeup of that lignotuber that they dig out of the ground, right? The, and I'm going to try to put some pictures. I don't know if it'll be over to, to the side or if I'll just 
throw the picture up on the screen by itself or a picture in a picture or something. I'll do something. I'll try to figure that out and put some pictures, some photos um, along and along as I'm talking. Uh, maybe I can show you my sheet of paper here. So we're going to, all right, I want you to look at this. Okay, so here's the, here's the branches that go up. Imagine that right here, that, that right there is the ground, is the dirt. And, and all this part underneath right there, of that, it looks kind of like a heart, but it ain't. This is, this is the lignotuber. And this is the branch that goes up and leafs out up above. So the shrub part would be above the ground up there. Under the ground is this bulbous lignotuber. Now there's like a center part of that lignotuber, okay? All right, and then the, the structures inside that plant that are called xylem, and that starts with an X, Y, E, L, E, M, xylem and phloem, P-H-L-O-E-M. All right, so there are these, there are these tube-like structures inside there that radiate out, just like I've got it right there showing you. It radiates out from the center, okay? And then out here on the very edge, on that, that outer edge out here, all right, I've done like a cutaway here. If you just cut a slice that looks like one of the blocks, when uh, Mimo cuts those, uh, those lignotubers into blocks that he's gonna use to make, you know, to either himself make a pipe from or, or sell it and send it to a pipe maker somewhere, that's kind of what it looks like. And on this dark part right here, on this outer part, which is the outside part here, okay? That outside part right there of the rounded part. So this is just a wedge out of that, okay? That's where your bird's eye is, on the outer part there. So these little tubular looking things are radiating out and that's what carries water and stores water and also stores carbohydrates which the plant uses as food, okay? All right, so, and I'm gonna put some. Uh, I've got some some uh, diagrams that I'm gonna I'm gonna put in this uh, in this post as well. Okay. All right, so you can see that that swath right there, and that's what that chunk of wood looks like when they cut cut kind of a pie shaped piece out of that spherical part that's right here. Okay, and then those are the roots on the bottom that come out off of the bottom there. That's the roots. All right. So there's your bird's eye that'll be out there. All right. So now, where's my other? Uh, all right. So we'll show some pictures of that root tuber, that lignotuber, right? You can call it a root ball, but really that's not what it is. It's a lignotuber. And you're going to see. Uh, when I put up those pictures of the xylem and the phloem, that's those straight lines going out, out, out like that, and, and that's what those lines represent here, okay? <clears throat> and inside those, those tubes going out, that's, like I said, that's what carries the water and the food for the plant, all right? And it's also where they'll store water and food for that plant. So let's say during a drought time, it's got extra water, to make it through that drought time, all right? So, lignotubers, plants come about because of things, like we said, areas that burn a lot. So they're, 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 they're adapting to be able to do that so that if it completely burns the upper part of the plant, it can sprout back, but it also does it in areas that are just drought prone and go through areas without hardly any water. So they have a storage device down there in order to make it through that dry time. And sometimes it's both. It's both a response, being able to, to adapt with that, having that lignotuber, big round ball looking structure under there, right? To adapt to, to the fire and to drought sometimes. Sometimes it's both. It could be one or the other, but usually, usually it's a little bit of both, okay? All right, so I'll put up some pictures for you to look at, and you'll see when you look at a pipe, a beautifully finished pipe, and you see that flame grain, if the flame grain, let's say my fingers are those tubes, okay? These are the flames. There's a flame, flame, flame up the side of the pipe like that, okay? So when you see those flames 
at the tips, bam, 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 right there, where it touches the outer part of the, the wood, where they've sanded it down. I tell you what, hold on just one second. I'm gonna grab something out of there and I'll be right back. Here we go. Okay, here's a pipe. Now, so this is a hand. This is a handmade pipe here, and um, I don't know who this was. This was passed down to me uh, from a friend. But you're gonna see. All right, this is a rough part of the outer part. Look at that right there. You see that? Okay, that right there that you're seeing is what I'm talking about. This part of the bird's eye right here okay now this one is not sanded down they left it rough and it looks cool when you see that it looks cool there just like that all right now if he had cut this and sliced he's carved it whoever made this she whoever it was has carved it there but if that was sanded flat right there you'd see those straight lines you'd see the flame going in that direction just like my finger right like that and then on the terminal ends of those tubules that are called the xylem and the phloem, that's right here, that's what you're seeing. So if this was sanded down smooth, all of that would be bird's eye, right there. Those little bumps. And there's a scientific name for those little bumps. I ain't gonna get into all that. Y'all y'all are like, he's driving me crazy with all these damn scientific, cussing scientific terms. But that's those bumps that you see there would be the bird's eye when you sand it down and you'll see it what you normally would call that okay so and this is just a, a chunk of the block right and you can imagine this this being if it were the whole lignotuber it'd be this big round thing like that with the flame grain coming out from the center and the bird's eye on the outside of that round spherical lignotube lignotuber okay all right guys and that's you know, I want to <laughs> shout out to Luke, <laughs> um, Double A Pipe Man. He also sent me, a, when I had mentioned that I, I might talk about that, he, uh, he wrote a comment. And he was like, I'd like to hear you talk about that, Jeff. So, Luke, there you go, buddy. Lignotuber, not a burl, xylem and phloem tubes out on the outer end of those tubes at the apical end of each of those tubes is what is that burl, I mean, excuse me, that um, is what is that uh, bird's eye, is what I meant to say. All right, guys, I will, this is like, look at that, 17 minutes, shortest, shortest one ever. Dang, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, I will see y'all later. Take care. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. I love all you guys. Take care of each other. Wear your mask. We're going to get through all this crap. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Remember, look in the bucket. There's going to be some cool links there. And if you'll see the scientific journal article, if you're a science type, Lester, Lester's going to go read it. <laughs> Red Coat's Red return. He's going to go read it because he's a, he's, a sci he's a scientist. So all you science types out there, or maybe if you're not a science type and you're just interested about that kind of stuff, you might go read that. But it's got a lot of the scientific terms in there and you're going to be reading that going, what the cuss are they talking about? Okay. Y'all enjoy. Take care. All right. Bye.